Hello all, I hope you are doing well and I hope you are also studying during these lockdown days. So uh, if you remember in our special paper class, this was the last topic that we learned about. So here we have, uh, here we have shown nanoparticles of different sizes and when they are illuminated uh, in a dark room, so we see that different colors are emitted from this nanoparticle solution. So the reason is that uh, different colors correspond to different sizes and types of these nanoparticles. So this blue type color that means uh, nanoparticles are smaller, smallest among all these five and they have the largest band gap and this red type color means that nanoparticles are the largest in size among all of these and uh, they have the smallest band gap. I hope you all of you remember this. So let us now move to the next topic which is uh, quite important and so here uh, we have to know why are these uh, nanoparticles unique. So why do they show very different uh, physical and chemical properties corresponding uh, or, or as opposed to their corresponding bulk materials. So, in order to understand that, we have to understand a topic called surface to volume ratio. So, uh, to understand surface to volume ratio uh, in a simple way, let us consider that we have a spherical particle. Okay. So, in that case, we have to find the ratio of the surface area to volume of this spherical particle. So, for a spherical particle, we know that 4 pi r square, where r is the radius of the particle. So, 4 pi r square is the surface area and the volume of that particle is 4 by 3 pi r cube. Therefore, if you do simplifications, we will get uh, the simplification result as 3 by r, the radius of the particle. That means, uh, the ratio of surface area to volume for a spherical particle is simply 3 divided by r. Thus, uh, in the second point, thus uh, the s by v or surface area to volume ratio is inversely dependent on the radius of the particle. So, this has been shown in this uh, particular calculation. This implies that smaller is the particle, greater is the surface to volume ratio. Okay. So, r is smaller, smaller r will correspond to a larger value of surface to volume ratio. Similarly, if r is very large, that means surface to volume ratio will be smaller. So, in the last point, uh, as the material size is reduced from bulk dimension to micro and then to nano dimension, the surface to volume ratio continues to increase with reduction in size. I hope this is this much is clear to you. Then uh, here uh, in this slide just uh, a comparison has been shown but remember that this comparison is not up to scale. So if we consider three dimensions like bulk dimension, micro dimension and nano dimensions and compare their surface to volume ratios. So you will find that for the bulk dimension they have the lowest surface to volume ratio. For micro dimensions, we have intermediate surface to volume ratio and for nano dimension, we will have the largest surface to volume ratio. That means the surface to volume ratio in this case will be the largest among all these three different scales of structures. I hope this is also clear to you. So next, uh, what are the consequences of this large surface to volume ratio? Okay, so let us uh, read uh, all these points and uh, in the meantime, I will try to explain these points. So, point 1 says, when uh, the relative influence of surface with respect to volume of a material is greatest, greater fraction of atoms will reside on the surface of the material as compared to inside. Okay, so that means relative when the relative surface area becomes more predominant as compared to its volume. So, most of the atoms or a greater fraction of the atoms of that particular material will be found on the surface of the material. Okay. Now, since most of these atoms are on the surface, uh, so the, what the point 2 says is the, this huge availability of surface atoms is the main differentiating factor 
of a material's nano domain than its bulk. Okay. Since uh, greater fraction of atoms are on the surface, the, that would result in observation of drastic changes in various physical and chemical properties of nanomaterials corresponding to their bulk material. Why? Because these surface atoms are the ones that can take part easily in various physical and chemical changes. Since for nanomaterials most of the atoms are on the surface, therefore those surface atoms will be easily able to take part in physical changes like melting, boiling, etc. In uh, nanoparticles, uh, the next point, the fourth point, uh, in nanoparticles, larger surface atoms can take part in desired physical and chemical changes like uh, catalysis, uh, melting point or boiling point. So, these are different types of chemical and physical changes in which uh, we can certainly see the differences in physical uh, differences uh, in properties of nanomaterials as compared to their bulk counterparts. So, an example has been included in the last point in which the melting point of bulk gold is 1064 degrees Celsius. So, melting point of bulk gold is generally quite high, but if we have 1.5 nanometer diameter gold nanoparticles, so that can have melting point as low as 25 degrees Celsius. Why? Because in case of 1.5 nanometer gold nanoparticles, a large fraction of atoms will be on the surface of this particle and therefore, when you supply heat to this nanoparticle, so these surface atoms will get, uh, will acquire larger kinetic energy and that will help in melting a gold 1.5 nanometer gold nanoparticles at a much lower temperature of 25 degrees Celsius as opposed to bulk gold whose, which has a very large melting point of 1064 degrees Celsius. So, I hope this much is clear to you and if you have any questions, please drop your comments, uh, drop your questions in the comment sections. I hope to get back to you soon with a new video. Thank you and I apologize to you if there is any background. So, see you soon in the next video. Thank you.